add the song to a playlist and shuffle to get there, but you can't actually select the song itself, which is pretty irritating, which is probably why it's designed to make you uh, sign up for the mother's research. But it's easier to just pay up and play what you want. And Absolutely. Uh, which out of all of them would you say is the most user-friendly for a starter? Ideally, something like Spotify has the most simple layout. If that's the first kind of streaming uh, experience that you've had, it's probably going to get easiest to get to grips with. Uh, Apple Music um, are doing it as well. Amazon now trying to get in on the game. I mean, do you think that there's room for another streaming site? I mean, Amazon have set themselves up for a real challenge here. Spotify is the biggest streaming service in the world by a significant margin. It's got over 39 million paying subscriptions. Apple Music is second with about 15 million. And you know when you go into a music shop and you buy a CD, you can look around an artist's catalogue. Um, would your choice for uh, musical taste dictate which site you choose? Well, Apple Music has made a real point about saying they've created a lot of playlists using human curators. You know, the emphasis is not on these algorithms that choose the sort of songs for you based on your previous listening. For example, if you were to listen to the Beach Boys, it would then suggest you more Beach Boys songs. Whereas Apple Music likes to push the fact that because you've listened to the Beach Boys, you might enjoy Variety Valley in the Four Seasons. You know, they've kind of associated that, that you might enjoy as a result. Yeah, and William, thanks very much indeed. In rural China, there's a lot of pressure on men in their early twenties to get married. But many of the women from these small villages migrate to the cities and never come back. Or they find well-off husbands in Africa.